If, if you're just now tuning in, we started off the program today talking about uh, or listening to the audio, Nick Saban really calling out the students. And he, I think he, he let it slip at the beginning, then he jumped off of it. He said there's already something being done to address it. I don't know if you picked up on that. At the beginning of that audio, James, he says there's something being done to address it. Then you notice at the end he said, well, maybe someone else needs to talk about it. When you when you listen and people talk like that, that that's, dang it, I said something, I caught myself. Well, other people are going to address this. Well, he's going to make it sound like other people's idea. But Nick Saban, just like he got that fence changed in a hurry, Expect the ticket policy to have a little different feel than what it's had in the past. I don't know what that means, but but expect that to come. So if you're just not tuning in, that's what we're talking about this morning. Does Nick Saban have a legitimate point about student tickets? Does he? But he didn't just call out the students. He also called out the fans. He said the stadium, when they introduced our players, the stadium used to go crazy. When they played the tradition thing, Fans used to go crazy. He said, now we just sit there. All right, Alabama fans, you call radio stations, you go on your Twitter account, you go on Facebook, and you dog these players. You dog the the receivers when they drop balls. You dog quarterbacks when they – well, this one hadn't missed any passes. But when the quarterbacks have missed passes in the past, when linemen don't get pushed, you dog them. Your one role, as as the ESPN's job says, you have one job. That's to be a fan that's excited about Alabama football. Nick Saban saying, you're not doing your job. So, James, what's the feel amongst the students? Uh, uh, did, did, did you all have any conversation last night after hearing Nick Saban call, call the students out? I mean, yeah, I think this is a conversation that we've been having really all year, um, especially among, amongst my friends. It's, it's almost to the point uh, Nick Saban mentions – is it still special to be at Alabama? And I think it's almost getting to the point where Alabama football is has been so special for so long and is, is to even a whole new level now that students are having a hard time uh, appreciating that. And when we're up 49-0 at halftime, a lot of a lot of people are just going home. They're going to parties. Um, they're going about the rest of their day because they think we've got this wrapped up and we're going to see the backups out there anyways. But I think that's that's a bad way to approach it. Um, by the students, and I think, yeah, Nick Saban will definitely uh, do something to address that. Yeah, do you? Th- but I, and I understand. I, I, you know, there was times where, I, even as a fan, and I'm not a big stadium fan, by the way, so I'm probably not the best one uh, to speak on behalf of the fan experience because I actually uh, never really was a fan that went to the stadium. I was, when I went to stadiums, the first time I saw Alabama play at Bryant Denny, I was already on scholarship. So go figure that. And I, this is the first time I got tickets in years. So I'm probably not the best guy. But it's not just the 49 to nothing. That stadium was empty at the beginning of that game before it happened. And I promise you, there's students that would have been there had they had the choice. Yeah, I can, I can tell you for sure there are students who would have been there. Um, and a lot of what was going on around campus was um, – People were trying to get rid of their tickets. People people thought there were better things to do, better games to watch, um, and so so people just really did not appreciate the raging Cajuns of Louisiana Lafayette, and and really are just mailing it in whenever we play um, a lot of opponents on the schedule, yeah. and and so I, I think that's something it comes with uh, playing smaller teams, but I, I think. Um, the stadium was not necessarily empty at the beginning of the game, but again, the issue is they got to show something at halftime when we're up 49-0, and that's usually when they show something like the student section, and by then, it's very much empty. Well, it was – now, I was at the Texas a m game, and students didn't – they didn't show up for that one. They, 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 they left at that one as well. Right. So, so I'm not going to give the students a break, but I am going to ask this question. And, and where are you from? I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee. Now – how did you end up at Alabama? Um, well, a, bi- a big part of it was scholarships. Scholarship. Now, have you become an Alabama football fan? Yes, I have. Okay. Now, amongst your friends, would they be able to say that same thing as a whole? 
I think a lot of them, yes, but I think a lot of them are are more of a fan of how good we are now than the program. Right. So, so my question now becomes Alabama's unbelievable growth, James, and and thank you for for kind of speaking to this on behalf of the students. When you look at Alabama football and, and what's going on here, do you think that Alabama has a problem? with the stadium down the road because a huge portion of Alabama student body, which makes up a huge portion of the future alumni are going to be from out of state. Now, now when I was coming along, the alumni was, was, was from different places, but it was a lot of in-state alumni. And that's who taught their kids, who brought their kids. When, when I was, when I was playing, James, I would meet family after family after family that says, man, we're the third generation. We're the fourth generation ticket holder. Well, I came to my first game when I was five, and now they're, you know, now they're 65, and they're bringing their grandchildren. I don't see that happening now. And if that's the case, is the, is the stadium going to become one of those where what we see in the student section translate even to the adult section? I think that that could become a possibility, um, an issue for, for, say, these games against the Louisiana Lafayettes, the Arkansas States. But I don't really see that against the, the, the A&Ms, the Auburns, uh, ever becoming an issue, really, just because um, Alabama football is an event all around the Southeast. In Memphis, we're always talking about Alabama football whenever it comes to a big opponent like that. I know people personally just from all around the city, all around the state, Um, all around the region who will travel hours just to come to an Alabama football game, um, no matter when it is or, um, you know, what the weather may be, if it's if it's a quality opponent. Now, I want both of you guys to reply to this one. I and and I think that all of the the student section, the the out of state students, I think all of that has some contribution to Alabama fans. But I also think Alabama, unfortunately, is a victim of his own success. Okay, the 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 diehard Alabama fans. Guess what they're thinking, especially those who have the finances, those who can afford the tickets in the regular season. Because you have to have you have to have money. There's there's some that it's not really general population, but there's only so many tickets available to the general population because there's a lot of tickets taken up by students and then tickets taken up by the actual um people who are in tight pride and, and all of that, and then you have that small section left. Well, I think those people are still fanatic and coming that get to come to one game here or there. And if their one game is the Raging Cajuns, because I've met a lot of people, their one game when we were working in the stadium, their one game was the Raging Cajuns. So they were excited. But the people who have season tickets, the people who have tight pride, the students, man, they're all planning for SEC championship game. Round one, round two. So if you're if you're from Memphis or you're from California or you're from Ohio, we're now a national school. Are you going to come even for a Texas A and M? Are you going to even if 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 LSU is coming and LSU is down? Are you even coming for that? Only game that I think that everybody's going to show up for is Auburn. Right? Yeah, I, I think that's that's a that's a big uh, big. Yeah, that's a big one with the money uh, because those those postseason games cost a lot to get into. So you got to really make a choice uh, if you want to come to one or two, you know, regular season or if you want to go to, say, the national championship. And I think that that can become a big issue, especially even with the students, because I know a lot of people last year, uh, even with the national championship game, we were all sitting there talking amongst ourselves saying, no, no, we'll just go to the next one. Yeah. Just assuming that we're going to make it back <laughs> sometime you, during our time here. And you, and you just nailed it. I believe that fans, because I've heard people say, man, the fans aren't showing up. Well, I believe those one-off fans are showing up. It's just we have so many that go, man, this team is expensive to follow. Let's just go back and recount BC, I mean, college football playoffs. You, you had to go to... To, to Orlando and to Dallas and to California and to, I mean I mean look look at if you're thinking who who doesn't think right now James who doesn't think this team is going to go 15 and well, well you know where the national championship game is this year 
Rose, and Santa Clara. Right, right, in California. So so who doesn't think this team is going to be 15-0? and What Alabama fan thinks this team is going to lose a game? I almost want to make a poll question out of that. Who? I mean, who thinks this team is going to lose a game? So if that's your thought process, are you saving your money for California? Not even Dallas. I mean, I'm talking about th- th- there's people that's not even going to go to the, the second – they're just going to assume that Alabama is going to be in the national championship game. And I know that that's <laughs> that's a tough thing, and we've talked about it. But the reality of it is, James, that's where we are. Students, yes, that's part of the issue. Uh, out of state, that's part of the issue. Um, Nick Saban calling them out. Now, I do think they can do something with the student tickets to get better participation. I think they can make it more of a premium instead of entitlement as a whole. And I think you get better support. But still, students want to go to those college football playoff games as well. So they're saving their money. They're saving. So anyway, it's an interesting conversation. Has Bama got so good that they're creating their own problems in their stadium? Maybe, just maybe, James, is that why they're going back and saying, hey, let's take some of these seats out, pack our stadium, make the tickets more of a premium. We'll talk about that more coming back right here on The Blitz. I got a couple questions. We're going to do deal, no deal in the fourth quarter. We're going to have recruiting with Hank South in the third quarter. Coming back out of the break, we're going to talk about uh, what would you change if you could change anything about Alabama? We got a few questions, uh, answers on that yesterday. Also got John Hold through the break. John, we'll catch you on the other side as well. All right, we were talking about the student section, and sometimes topics kind of take over and have a little more life to it than you expect. Several people chiming in on Facebook. We got John we're going to bring in here in just a second uh, to talk about UA student attendance. Virgil Williams saying, I think part of the problem is with the fans is there's a lot of Fairweather fans. They don't know or care about the tradition of Alabama. Talking about when he hears the video of Bryant playing, it gives him chills. He's been with them through the thick and the thin, through the good and the bad, uh, has not wavered as a fan. Uh, Robert Saucier said it wasn't but just a few years ago that students were absolutely crying for more tickets uh, when we started winning. Um, Also, Robert Saucier says, you think this is bad? Wait till the Citadel game. Virgil Williams coming back with, I bet the quad, this is an interesting statement here. I, I bet the quad was still packed out Saturday the problem is it be, it's become a party instead of actually supporting your game. And that's kind of what teams are trying to do. They're trying to make football games events and parties because they're competing against tailgates, tailgate parties and view parties. And I, I think I heard somebody's coming out with like an 85-inch, some type of special TV that's going to cost like 15 grand. I just heard that this morning. I couldn't remember if I was asleep, dreaming, or just – uh, or what, but I, I think it was 85, 80, 85, I think it was 85, some type of special TV, 15 grand. Here's a question now. This is something you guys may want to comment on. Larry Miller said, where well, my son and I were playing, could, uh, could tell there were, were tons of seats, and when Tua came out of the game, a lot more left. Now, if, if that's the case, and I believe he may be right, but that is absolute, that is worse than not coming. If you came to see one player, and I believe fans do that. I believe that fans do that. So I'm not disagreeing with Larry Miller. I'm saying that is that is disrespecting the other 21 guys. That's what Nick Saban is saying. Is saying that we, we're, we're disrespecting the players. And so if Alabama fans, do you think Alabama, as great as, as, great as it is, has got to the point where one, fa- one player – is driving the attendance, James, guys, do y'all, I mean, do you believe one player is driving the attendance? Because I think Larry may have a valid point. He's saying when Tua left the game, people left. Is it, is Tua that, are you disrespecting the other 21 or just showing that much love for Tua? I will say this for Larry, he is not the only one that I have heard that theory from as far as people coming just to see Tua. And, and, but do you do you really believe that's the case? Is it that many people out there 
that come just to see Tua and, and forget all the other guys? I think not necessarily like the general population fans like you talk, talked about are doing that um, to the same extent as maybe the student section, which uh, does feel this entitlement that we get to see these guys play every week. But when two is on the field, it's something else. It's something special. And we just want to be a part of it. Right. And so when he's leaving the game at the end of the first quarter, I, I see a lot of people filing out saying, all right, two is done. We'll see you next week. And to me, as a former player, that is crap. I ain't going to say the word yet. That is crap. <laughs> I'm just telling you. I understand it. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm talking about from as a, as a former player, not as a fan. As a former player, I'm thinking, oh, my God, I protect this guy. Like, for me, for me, my job was to protect Jay Barker or Tua as a blocker. And so when he left, I had to do the same thing for the next guy. You know, so my job didn't change. And I understand it. I'm not disagreeing with Larry. I'm just saying that's amazing that Alabama has gotten so good that it takes a player like Tua to get the Alabama fans to stay in the game amongst all the other superstars that's still playing. Because Jerry Judy and Henry Ruggs and Najee Harris and Damian Harris and Mac Wilson and Deontay Thompson, those guys are still making plays even in the first quarter or the second quarter when two is on the bench. And we got to the point where fans don't care. Let's bring in John. <laughs> hey, John, welcome here. What's on your mind, man? Hey, good morning. Good morning. Hey, listen, um, listen. I'm a graduate from the University of Alabama. Yes, sir. My wife's a graduate from the University of Alabama. We used to be a part of Tide Pride. Mm-hmm. I'm talking years ago. Um, I no longer like to go to games just because I can't handle the crowd. I have PTSD from mm-hmm. serving in combat zones. Thank you for serving. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I appreciate that. But I work security at Sorority House. And there's a lot of students that don't even are, can't get tickets because they're not eligible for it. So every every student doesn't get a ticket. Right, and that's what Sabian was talking about. And I don't I don't really understand that because when I was in school, that was just part of part of tuition. Well, if you, you did to- that though, you'd have forty thousand tickets gone, uh, John. I mean, and and think about what the stadium would look like if 40,000 students left at halftime. <laughs> so, well, now, now, and, and they can't charge premium for those student tickets. <laughs> well, you know, and, but, you know, take out the students, but the price is that, that just Joe fan has to pay, you know, that that's a big part of it too. Oh, I, and that's why I said this team this team in a regular season is expensive to carry, I mean, to follow, much less looking down the road at other, you know, championship postseason games. Well, absolutely. And I think that's one of the big rise of, you know, what we have on the quad for game days now is because, you know, I can go to the university, set up a tent, and have a you know, and have a TV and watch everything. Yep, have a you know, party and it, an event right there at the stadium. <laughs> a- absolutely. Yeah. Without going in there and, and fighting the crowd, I don't even like. I don't even like going to the squad because it's too many people for me. Yeah. You know, but it's. I don't know. I I don't think there's an answer to it. I don't either. I think JPC said it this way. JP said it's not a he's right, she's right, they're right, uh, right or wrong topic. Uh, he said Saban's right about the students not showing up at the beginning, and and that's that's legit. But he said about Stephen lo- leaving early, uh, that's part his fault because he calls off the dogs a la 49-0. He puts the second half guys in, whoever that is, you know, and he only lets them score seven points. So, you know, he's not giving them the full price in the second half either. So I think it's kind of a combo Hey, John, you got anything else for me? I got to get to one more call and then get to a break. Yeah, one thing real quick. Yes, sir. Working at, working at sorority house is security. You know, they leave late for the game, and they're back early. before 
halftime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, I tell you, hot, cold, it don't matter. It's either too hot or it's too, <laughs> too cold. cold. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, listen, enjoy the show, man. All right. And th- uh, listen, I appreciate you taking my call. Have a good day, Mark. All right. Thanks, John, and thanks for serving. All right, Pat. Pat, I don't have long for you, but, man, I had to get you in before the good, break. Go ahead. Good, good morning. Hey, I don't want money. I want power. You hear me? Power. <laughs> I want to be over the student section. I can solve the problem with Uh-oh. him. As we what? talked about in the past, I can solve that problem. Hey, there's 15,000 tickets available for students. Hey, there's 40-something thousand, 45,000 students. I can solve that problem. Make them stand in line every week. Hey, no, not staying in line every week. That uh, when they use your card, hey, they use your card to go out too. And if they go out before the fourth quarter, hey, their card ain't any good the next week or the next week or the next week. And somebody else <laughs> that, that was that was in line to get tickets gets to come into the ball game. So you just you just have it managed when they when they come in. They check in when they check out. If they check out before a certain point, they lose their privileges. They're, 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 they're All, right. All right, they solve that problem quickly. But uh, <laughs> hey, but Coach Saban, from what I understand, Coach is ticked off because people are not hollering before the uh, when, they, when yeah. the kids come out on the field. Mm-hmm. Hey, I mean it's ridiculous. We have how, how do you think we're supposed to recruit when we don't have the best atmosphere in college football? And hey, I think that's what down, I think that's what um Saban Saban's whole thing is about the stadium and the atmosphere. Um if a kid comes to Alabama and then he goes to Auburn. A kid comes to Alabama and then he goes to Penn State or he goes to Clemson or whatever, where they're still hungry for winning, he sure. knows that that kid goes, man, atmosphere creates, you know, uh, a, a winning, lot. Winning is supposed to create winning. However, the fans in Alabama are becoming complacent. Yes, sir. That, uh, hey, now, we have there that our, our tailgate, James has been to uh, my tailgate. I feed extremely well. But, hey, we have – I got a media man that comes in, does nothing but set up the television to yeah. make sure we have we're able to click off every game in the country. Yeah, <laughs> hey, well, you got crap like that going on. Hey, and I'm hey, I'm part of the problem, not part of the solution. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, hey, but, man, but I got that, the run, man. Go, All right, go hey, have a blessed day. I'm not going to be able. I'm, I'm I'm headed out fishing now. I can't. Uh, I won't be able to call back on recruiting. We'll catch it next week, though. Okay? All right, you ain't got anything Thank for you, him, man. Baby. All right, be bye-bye. good, babe. Bye. No, bye bye. All right. Hey, let's quickly get to James. James, real quick, you're in. Uh, what you got for the student section? Man, instead of the fraternities and the sororities being able to get entire blocks that they don't use, I feel like it should be first come, first serve. Standing in line never hurt nobody. Now, that'll solve some of the issue if if uh, the Greek system didn't have block seating. Uh, it would also help with complete sections being empty as well. Because what happens yep. is if if one particular it, it'd be like if you went to a high school game and you brought fifty people to the game to see your uh your nephew play and all fifty of y'all left because he played the first half and was gone, boom, then that that, that empties out the stadium. But if it was kind of spread out and a few people left, uh, fifty people left from spread all out, it's not as obvious. And I think that's part of the thing that he was talking about when he was talking about entitlement. So. Yeah, I tell you, if I was a student at the University of Alabama, I'd be listening to Coach Savior. Yeah. He I typically think... gets what he wants. Yes, he does. And, <laughs> and if you don't change, something else will. You know what I mean? Yep, absolutely. So, all right. Hey, James, I appreciate it. Was there anything else I need to get to break? No, man, that was it. I appreciate you, Mark. All right, appreciate you, James. Roll tight.